June 4th in Cali, Colombia's third biggest city. Protesters throwing stones at the police, using lasers to try to confuse them. Hey, para México, ayúden, ayúden, ayúden. This man has been hit by a police bullet. Forty minutes later, at a first aid post, his heart stops beating. His name was Secundo Jaime Rosas. That evening, another young protester, Christian Sanchez, is hit by the police. He dies at the same first aid post. Hoy es 4 de junio, tenemos dos compañeros caídos por arma de fusil. The clashes took place in a neighborhood of Cali called Villa del Sol. It has been a hotbed of protest in the city since a nationwide strike started on April 28th. It was sparked by a plan for tax reform that would have hit the middle and working classes. The government withdrew the plan on May 2nd, but the protests continued. People angry about corruption, growing inequality, and violence against the protesters, from the police, from armed civilians. Violence that has been documented by hundreds of amateur videos and by our observers. This is the first aid post where the two young men were brought on June 4th. This man was on duty that night. He wanted to remain anonymous because he and other health workers have been receiving threats. We treated between 30 and 36 people that night for injuries. Two of them died. We removed the bullets from some of the wounds. Gunshot injuries have a specific characteristic. The entry wound is smaller than the exit wound. Some of the victims had injuries consistent with rifle fire. One thing that really shocked us is that the authorities didn't allow ambulances into the neighborhood to take away the wounded, and it was like a battleground here. We were treating patients as they came in, some on the ground, some on the grass, as bullets were whizzing over our heads. It was terrifying. Traces of the bullets are still visible on the streets. A comprehensive report by three Colombian NGOs found 44 deaths linked to police actions in the first two months of protests, at least 33 of them by gunfire. Alejandro Rodriguez works for one of the NGOs, Temblores, which has been gathering amateur videos and first-hand accounts since the start of the protests. Under Colombian and international law, the use of firearms by police in the context of demonstrations is simply not allowed. The Colombian police have opened an investigation into officers' conduct on the 4th of June in Cali. On the 14th of May, people gathered in the southern city of Popayan for another day of demonstrations. Among them, Sebastian Quintero, a student. What was Sebastian doing there that day? On the 14th, after finishing his job selling baked goods, he said he was going to the demonstration because of what happened to that girl, Alison. Allison is a 17-year-old who had been arrested at a demonstration on May 12th and taken to a detention center belonging to the ESMAD riot police. The next day, she committed suicide. In her last post on Facebook, she wrote, they pulled down my pants and fondled me. The police launched an investigation, but the protesters were furious. 
On the afternoon of the 14th, they attacked the detention center where Allison had been held. On the avenue, the demonstration became a riot. The police responded with force using a grenade launcher known as Venom. According to the police's own publicity video, the Venom is a non-lethal weapon designed to disperse crowds. Capable of firing 30 tear gas canisters and stun grenades, it's supposed to be aimed in the air and not directly at people in order to avoid injuries. But videos filmed on May 14th in Popayan show grenades being launched directly at protesters. Sometimes at close range. A court later ordered police to stop using the venom in Popayan, citing its direct use on demonstrators. On May 14th, the police used other non-lethal weapons against the crowds, including water cannon, stun grenades, and armored vehicles. Late that afternoon, another video shows a scene on the same avenue. An explosion and a demonstrator carried away. Sebastian Quintero. Human Rights Watch says he was hit by a police projectile. ESMAD units dispersed the demonstration using tear gas canisters and stun grenades. Videos and other evidence show that one of them hit Sebastian Quintero in the neck. Apparently, the police fired something over the protesters' heads, hoping to cause injuries. It was a premeditated act. It was a deliberate action by the person who fired. An investigation is underway. As of the end of June, there had been no official statement on what caused Quintero's death. According to the NGO's report, non-lethal weapons caused fewer deaths than firearms, four, but many more injuries, 207, many of them serious and permanent. We've seen tear gas canisters and stun grenades being aimed at demonstrators' faces. The intention is clearly to create a handicap, to cause a permanent injury. The victims don't die, but they end up with a lifelong injury, like losing an eye. At least 149 injuries to the face have been recorded, including 70 affecting the eyes. Kali, the 9th of May. Groups of indigenous people have come to the city from a neighboring district to join the demonstrations. The residents of this wealthy suburb are not happy. A man in a white shirt watches them drive by. He has a pistol. There's shooting at other locations in Cali that day. At this crossroads. And in this street. This handgun is what's known in Colombia as a traumatic weapon. It fires rubber bullets that are supposed to be non-lethal. In another neighborhood, A police officer in uniform looks on as a man in civilian clothes shoots at a group of indigenous people a few dozen meters away. While many of the weapons seen on May 9th were firing rubber bullets, indigenous leaders say real bullets were fired too, injuring 12 of their people. Here's our analysis about the men in civilian clothing in white shirts with weapons. If the police were there, it suggests the men in white were police officers in plain clothes. There were other shooting incidents in Cali. On May 28th, men in civilian clothing attacked protesters again on this bridge, uniformed officers at their sides. 
One of the civilians is a man named Andres Escobar, a local businessman. He later said he had formed a neighborhood watch group to defend what he called their private property against potential damage by protesters. He said he used a traumatic weapon that day, not one with real bullets. Los disparos fueron para disuadirlos, ya que estaban avanzando para quemar el CAI. At the same time as the shooting on the bridge, a concert was underway just a kilometer away in support of the protests. Playing the French horn, Alvaro Herrera, a student, 25 years old. But the concert is interrupted. There's a shooting nearby, men in civilian clothing again, with uniformed police. As he made his way home, Alvaro found himself in the middle of it. I started to film what was going on, but then one of the armed civilians stepped back and pointed a gun at me. I picked up a stone to defend myself. Another civilian came at me from the left and grabbed my neck like he was going to strangle me. Then they dragged me to a place where they could hand me over to the police. Alvaro was taken to a police station where the officers pressured him to make a false confession. He was released the next day. The circumstances of his arrest appear to show some form of coordination or cooperation between the armed civilians and uniformed police. Police inquiries are underway about what happened to Alvaro and to identify the men who were shooting at protesters that day and why the police did nothing to stop them. <laughs> Colombian President Ivan Duque has promised better training for the nation's police officers with regard to the use of force and more respect for human rights. But he has kept the police under the authority of the defense ministry, resisting calls to have them transferred to civilian control and avoid the kind of deadly repression the country has seen in 2021.